Okay, I got all my washable parts in here. Make sure they're nice and clean when I put them back on. Okay, now take our parts that we're washing, give them a little scrubbing, get all that dirt off of them. Make sure they're nice and clean. Okay. Now we'll let them sit them down and let them dry. Make this machine look like a brand new. Perfect. Like as if it was never dirty. And there's that little breather. Okay. Now the rest of the machine will wash when we power wash it. Okay, I wasn't going to show you cleaning this <coughs> carburetor because there's so many videos on cleaning the carbs. But <coughs> I just wanted to show you what I did pull off the bowl and inside is filthy. All this stuff I found inside the carb. Gross. Okay, everything's all clean. Pulled it out of the uh, ultrasonic. Uh, the only thing I want to do is I want to run a little bit of compound in the hole for the, uh, the valve seat. So we'll put it in the vise. We'll get a little compound, valve grinding compound, water mix I have here. <coughs> take our uh, what do they call these well they clean out ears with these things we'll get a little bit of compound on there not too much just enough put it on our drill and then 
can run it up and down inside the seat. That'll take all the uh, calcium out of there <clears throat> and clean the bottom of the seat so the rubber part of the seat will make complete contact around the brass so it won't allow gasoline to bypass. Okay, we'll spray that out with some uh, carb cleaner. Watch your eyes. And if you have any uh, cuts on your hand, wear gloves because uh, it stings. All right. That looks good. We'll blow this out with air to make sure all the little particles are gone. Um, this is the rest of the parts here for the carburetor. And uh, we're going to get this on. Put it together and then we'll come back. This rubber, scrape your nail against some of this stuff here or soak it in some WD-40. That would be a good idea to soak it in the DW-40. Not the carb cleaner because the carb cleaner will make it stretch and uh, you'll have a hell of a time trying to get it back on the carb. Okay we'll be back when uh, I put it all together. Well then, let's put this carburetor back together again. We uh, it's all cleaned up, nice and clean inside. I found another gasket <clears throat> that will match. Uh, this uh, carburetor. Uh, this one here is uh, <clears throat> not that good. So we'll put the new gasket on. So let's put it together. Everything is cleaned out, blown out. Uh, we did uh, <clears throat> use a little valve compound to at the valve seat and we uh, cleaned that out so let's uh, put the there's a spring missing here there go. there's the spring let's put the spring on the needle be careful you don't lose that spring it's very small and we're going to put this <coughs> needle on the bowl float We have to pull back on that spring a little bit. <laughs> Watch you don't let it go when you're putting it on because it'll fly. All right. So the needle's on the float. <clears throat> We're going to put it in the needle seat. And we'll take the axle and put that on next. The hinge pin, whatever you want to call it. We'll look at the float, make sure it's a little bit uh, level there. Okay. Now, we did uh, let our <clears throat> um, float uh, O-ring, float bowl o -O the float bowl O-ring uh, sit in a little bit of uh, WD-40 
or uh, any other oil that you might have around just to keep it more pliable. Alright, let's put our jet in. We cleaned that. We blew it out. We uh, used uh, a small dental drill to put, uh, clean that out. What's nice about a dental drill, it's small at the tip and gets bigger at the base. Let's put that back in. It's only one way it can go because you got the screwdriver end on uh, the other end. Wipe off your tip so you can tighten it up without adding any debris in it. Don't have to go hog wild tightening it, you just want to get it on there firm. Okay. Now we'll take the bowl gasket. No need to wipe it off, just put it back on with the oil on there. Seems almost like it shrunk, but hopefully not. Sits in that little pocket. That's strange. Okay, now we're going to put our bowl on. Uh, it's going to be opposite side of uh, where the fuel comes in. So we'll, because this has a clean out on it, we want that on the opposite side of this. And then our bowl nut, we clean that up. It's a 10 millimeter. All right. So it's all back together except for putting in our idle jet. This has two. It has two O-rings, one on this end and one on the back end here. Inspect those. If there's any cracking or something off, you're going to have to change them. And they both look good. Now, what's good about the dental drill is that it'll fit down into that little hole and you can look in the hole that's in the side over here to see if it comes through. All right, we didn't open that up any or anything like that. We just uh, checking to see if there's a, a hole there so it can work by sucking in air mixture. Um, you don't have uh, access to like a dental tools. Um, bread tie will work very good on this. Bread tie is small enough to get get in that little hole and to clean it out. All right, let's put it back on the carburetor. So we have a flats. There's two flats. There's one on one on this side and one on this side. We have to get at least one of those flats to match up. Right here there's like a little flat 
protrusion here we want to put that on there and then snap it in okay you'll hear it snap in once once it goes in and then we have our adjustment screw here that we know that there are like two threads sticking out the back end here so we'll put that back on too couple threads sticking out on the other side will be plenty for now anyways till we go to adjust it so there's your uh, carburetor clean and uh, everything works checking the choke and checking the throttle everything works we cleaned out all the holes everything's cleaned up um, so for now this is all set we could set it aside and uh, clean up the rest of the engine um, we do have to clean up the armature here, both uh, top and bottom sides of the uh, where the hold downs are and also the radiuses here. So uh, we'll clean those up, we'll clean the flywheel up, we'll clean the whole the rest of uh, the engine, make sure all <clears throat> ports and uh, sides are open, no mouse nests in there. Um, because if you you clean if these fins are full of mouse nests, um, it'll overheat the engine. So be careful. Um, okay, so that'll be it for right now. Until I come back to set the carburetor back in place and also the armature, um, we'll be back. Okay, let me show you what's going on in this plastic tank. Somebody actually uh, poured in gasoline in a, from a metal tank that was rusted. And in this plastic tank, there's all this rust. That was the downfall of this recycler by Toro. So I'm going to clean that all out. Hopefully you can see all that rust. This is the filter here. I'm going to have to take that off and clean that all out too. But yep, that's what killed this machine is the rust in the tank. So remember, when you uh, fill up a tank with gasoline and it's metal and you let it sit for too long, moisture gets in there and rust will occur. So you're better off with a plastic gas tank and change that gasoline out every six months. So this is Hank uh, going to go on to the next section. Well, next day we uh, already cleaned the armature up. <clears throat> we cleaned both the surfaces, top, bottom, and on the radius here for the armature. Today, we're going to set the tank back in place. It's all cleaned out. There was all rust inside from a, a previous owner putting uh, rusty gas inside here, which blocked up the whole carburetor. The engine has 170 PSI compression. Uh, everything looks good. So let's put this all back together again. And... Uh, I cleaned out the filter. It's all set. The filter goes into the inlet here. Like so. Then we want to put the hose back in.
Okay. <clears throat> Let's get a, what do you call it, uh, a pair of pliers. That's back on. What we're going to do is we're going to put the a tank back on to the unit, which sits right there. Need that 10 millimeter bolt for the back. That's going to go on top of here first. All right, so we put the 10 millimeter bolt on the back. We're leaving it loose for now. Um, we're going to put the armature on. Check all your wires. Make sure there's no frays and no bare wires. Let's plug that into the armature. Usually they'll say this side up or whatever, but uh, this one here doesn't say anything. Okay. We'll put that on there for... We're going to use one bolt, and then uh, the other side is actually a bolt that holds the top on too. So we'll just get this one started. Come on. Why aren't you doing that? Okay, we'll put the spark plug back in. Okay, okay. That was a 11 sixteenths spark plug. And I believe that's a 10 millimeter thread on the spark plug itself. All right. Time to put the carburetor back on. Take the stuffing out of there. Here's our carb. Gas inlet this way. Nice and tight. We need 
to uh, Going to be going on there. There we go. Okay. All right. The uh, <coughs> automatic choke is on. Now we're going to put the throttle cable, uh, throttle rod on. Got to move this uh, plastic thing over. Line up the hole. There we go. Uh, the wire spring. We want to put that in the little hole next to there. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't move that little bit. All right, we've got a new gasket for our carburetor. Make sure you put that on the right way. Very good. Um, two nuts. For now, we're just going to put them on there. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to put our two other standing uh, bolts for the cover on here now. And we're also going to add on uh, the two nuts that go on this automatic choke. So let's get on that side. <clears throat> all right, let's put these nuts on here. Well, first of all, got to make our connection. So our connection is going to be like that. There we go. So when this heats up, this will open it up for uh, choke. Um, yeah, we want to put these two standing bolts up. Okay, I don't know how many of you people noticed, but this one is on backwards, upside down. That's why I couldn't get it to work right. Yeah, I don't usually work on uh, push mowers. I usually work on riding mowers. So that's my downfall, not remembering where things go. Tighten that back up. Okay. And we will use a 10 millimeter to take it off. Take those two nuts off. All right. That's uh 
why I say take a picture of what you're doing if you've never done it before so you can have a log of uh, where parts go. So this, yeah, definitely goes on top of here. The same threads, top and bottom. Okay, once again, I'm going to use the deep socket one. That's why I had it out. Uh, I should have known better. And we'll put the card back on. Where'd the card go? Hmm. Here it is. Put the screwdriver or something there. Nope, let's loosen them all up. Alright. All right. Let's get the magnet where it belongs. That's much better. All right, this goes on here. These hold the gas tank in place too. So. Okay. So, space this again. Let's put the cover on the gas tank. Okay. See, we have a uh, breather here somewhere. Where'd it go? There it is. <clears throat> this breather has to go. And then in here. 
goes in here. Now, the cover. Perfect. up the fuel Now these two hoses are for uh, the gas tank uh, bypass of gases from the tank to the carburetor. It's not really fuel, it's just uh, exhaust gases. And they, they'll go on, <clears throat> one goes on this little one and one goes on this big one. And what happens is uh, this, this is like a little, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, chamber where it'll f take the gases and allow it to go down through and back into the carburetor. Uh, this other one is just right in here before the, after the filter. So we'll put that one on. And we'll take these two nuts off. Two nuts back on here. We need to put a brand new filter on. All right, let's put the air filter on. Goes inside those, that little pocket there. Make sure every it's in all the way, like so. Now this white part goes inside here. So let's get it all lined up. I don't like the way that fits. Let's put it inside here first. good now the last thing we have to do is put our recoil back on
Okay. Where's our nuts net on the other side, huh? So, everything's back together. Very good. So, next time you see this, it'll be out on the grass, and we're going to start her up. Okay, today we're going to change out the air filter <clears throat> that we didn't like. Because it had a hard time, you know, going in here. Be careful where you buy these things because, like, they're supposed to fit, but they don't. This, these I bought from Amazon. You can't close the lid. So, I mean, it's the right size, but what I found out is that the original Kohler one uh, is just a bit smaller just a bit smaller inside so let's see how this one fits um, you know so what we want to do is you want to put this one in like so and this pocket in here is where the filter goes in Put the filter in there first. It's not doing any better, really. <laughs> well, this is a Kohler filler filter for a Kohler product. Let's get her in this way first. Try to put in the cover. And lock it. Hmm. Yep. You know, it might be this little latch here. I think what I have to do is heat it up and Pull up the latch, but we'll see. All right, let's shut you down. Okay, as you notice, the blue one had a hard time getting put in too. So the orange one I had from the inner screen looked like it fit, but it was too tight. The blue one was too fat. So I went out to another store and got a Stens part, part number 055-184. It replaces the Kohler 
14083 15-S. So let's see how this one does. All right, we have instru installation instructions, foam elements. Foam filters must be oiled before installing. There is no foam element on this. Okay, so this one here, if you look at the other one, looks almost identical. A little different type of rubber. This one's a little harder. But let's see, even the back is just a little, <laughs> not much difference. But this one won't work. And the inner screen is, oh well, you know, China, whatever. So we'll put this uh, element in here. Fits nice and loose. And we'll put the lock locking uh, cover on. And it snaps in. Ah, there you have it. So, stems. Good number, good element. All right, then. So, we got a new filter in. Uh, all we need to do now is put gas in it, change the oil. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take it off the table, put it on the ground, and uh, put gas in it then, and we'll let it heat up a little bit before we change the oil. All right. We'll be right back. Okay, before we uh, go ahead and uh, take it off the table, I want to take the blade off, sharpen the blade, and balance it prior to bringing it off the table. So let me do that. Do that. Okay, this uh, 16 millimeter bolt on the cutting blade. Let's take that off first. So this blade is one of those mulching blades and uh, yeah it's been hit a couple times but we can save all that. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll resharpen that all up. We'll be back when it's nice and sharp and balanced. Okay then, we sharpened the blade, looks good on both sides, we balanced it. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, reinstall the blade back on to the mower. <clears throat> yeah. Where are you? There you go. Take care of that. All right, we're going to take her off the table. Gas her up. We have oil in her. It's really not that bad, but I uh, will gas her up. And see how she runs. But let me uh, get you set up on the other camera. Okay, I'm going to add in a little bit of uh, Aspen fuel um, because we don't know how long this engine is going to sit before it's being used. So let's fill her up with the Aspen fuel. And we'll see if there's any leaks. Okay. 
give her a little time to settle in the bowl. Let the bowl fill up a little bit. <clears throat> now this says guaranteed to start. We'll see, huh? All right, we got the break off. I'm just gonna give it a couple pulls here, just so it has some suction to suck some gas out of the bowl. I don't know if you saw that or not, but I wasn't even pulling hard. <laughs> And that thing did start right up. Let me uh, see if I can do that again. Are you kidding? wasn't even pulling on it that was just making that flywheel spin a little bit and it started right up all right this is Hank saying over and out we got a good product here and Ken is already got it sold this is Hank saying over and out <laughs>